mind and I can say well, being in a full accord and open mind. Do not bring some selfish ambition but in humanity regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you know and let each of you look not in your own interest but in the interest of others. Let the same mind in you that was in Christ Jesus, who he was informed of God, did not regard equally with God as one something to be exposed. The entity emptied himself, taking the form of slavery, born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exuded him, exalted him, and gave him a name that above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, the glory of the God the Father, the Lord the Lord. Something to be in charge. 
They don't seem to match up very well. And we don't often see them put together because they seem to be conflicting terms. But here they are in our readings today. And I don't think that's my mistake. In our Gospel text, Jesus has just gone into the temple and flipped over tables. And now the chief priests come to ask him, What's your deal? Who do you think you are? This question, they question Jesus' authority because it challenges the status quo. This is the way they've been doing things for years. And Jesus is bringing about change. And they want to know, why should we listen to you? What authority do you have to go and change things? In Paul's letter to the Philippians, we get an idea of where this authority comes from. Paul says that Jesus was given the name that is above all names, Lord. Jesus is given a name, and names are really important because they are part of our identity. And I know they're important because I struggle to remember all of yours. Names give us part of our identity, and they say something about us. In the Bible, people would name their children with a specific meaning behind that name. For example, Jesus is a variation on the name Joshua, which means Savior or Deliverer. I say that it fits Jesus pretty well. Have you ever looked into what your name means? It's kind of fun sometimes to, to hear about the different meanings that your name might have. And in fact, uh, again, I'm going to ask Pastor Kendall this service to come up front. And uh, would you mind standing in front here? Oh, you can go on. No, you can say it right there. I'm preaching today. All right. So I took the liberty of looking up Pastor Kendall's name to see what it meant. And it turns out that Kendall means bright valley. Now, as Lutheran 
years in Minnesota, because no one needs to tell us twice to be humble. Humility is something we value pretty highly in our culture. And in fact, I know this because we don't want to be the center of attention so much that we leave the first five pews open. We understand this idea of humility pretty well. But what about authority? What authority do we have? What authority do we have as Christians to go into the world proclaiming the gospel? I think because of how highly we value humility, we often lose sight of the fact that we also have authority. But it is not our authority. We didn't earn it or deserve it. Paul says, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And here's the kicker. We are in Christ. We are woven together in Christ. And through the waters of baptism, we are woven in Christ, claimed as children of God. The chief priest asked Jesus, by what authority do you do these things? Who said you could come here and change everything? Who said you could challenge us and the way things are? Outside my office, there's a calendar, and on the calendar I have written some really random holidays, holidays that wouldn't appear on a normal calendar, holidays that are fun to kind of celebrate, and today just happens to be Ask a Stupid Question Day. Yeah, so I can't help but think as the chief priest asked Jesus who gave him authority, that Jesus kind of smiled a little bit and was like, what kind of question is that? What do you mean who gave me the authority? The authority is given by God. Is that, is that good enough? Is that a good enough authority for you? Through baptism, we are woven together in Christ. And being in Christ, we have authority. Authority to challenge the status quo. Authority to create and lead change in the world. Authority to preach the gospel because, as Luther said, we are all consecrated priests through baptism. Did you guys know you were priests? You are priests. You can preach, you can teach, you can share the gospel. You have authority. We are woven into Christ through baptism, and we have authority to live out the gospel. We did not earn this authority, but it is given to us by grace. This authority does not look like what the world understands as authority. It is not oppressive. It is not treating others as inferior. Rather, this authority comes through humility. Christ did not receive this authority from arrogance or power or superiority. Christ received this authority through humbling himself. We have authority in Christ. Authority to go out into the world as humble servants and place others ahead of ourselves. As we are woven together in Christ, so we are woven in His authority, an authority that comes through humility. May we claim the authority that is in Christ through humility. May God weave us together in authority, and may God weave us together.